tonight we are going to venture back off into the realm of uh, charcuterie, which is uh, French, I guess, for uh, it's a process, it's the process of um, brining or salting, curing meat or fermenting meat. And uh, so I was at the grocery store the other day. Actually, I had a couple things kind of um, meet in the middle, so to speak. I've been watching some YouTube videos uh, recently about making buckboard bacon. And basically, buckboard bacon is any other part of the hog being processed just as if it were bacon. And so, uh, a lot of the people that I see doing it on YouTube and whatnot, they were they are using um, pork butt to turn into this buckboard bacon. And uh, it has some advantages. For one thing, it's more lean than bacon. Um, but at any rate, so I was at the grocery store the other day and I had no intention of buying meat of any kind. And I happened to look, a glance over into the, at the meat case and I see a case full of uh, what appears to be pork butts. And so I had to go investigate. I just had to because it's just in my nature. And I get over there and they're selling pork butts for 99 cents a pound. So needless to say, it was mandatory that I buy one, even though I didn't really want one. At that price, it was just uh, impossible to pass up. So tonight, what we are going to do, we are going to make our brine, and we are going to prepare our pork butt, pork butt to put into the brine. And we will actually eventually put it into the brine as well. Um, so the first thing we're going to work on is getting this brine put together. Then what I'm going to do is uh, debone the, it is not a boneless pork loin here, so I'm going to debone it and I'm going to slice it probably into about three different pieces. Uh, reason being is because if, you, if the pieces are too big it's going to take a really long time to cure and so uh, by slicing it down into thinner pieces that will allow the cure to penetrate from both sides in a more timely manner. Now it's my plan to cure this for approximately one week, probably will be one week. And so uh, let's get started. We're going to get turned around here and we're going to get to work on this brine. Okay, so I got several ingredients here and I want to talk about them individually. Uh, probably the main ingredient or one of the main ingredients I've got here is a gallon of distilled water. Now, do you ha absolutely have to use distilled water? I'm going to say no, you do not. However, um, many you might want to consider your water supply, and the reason being is because many uh, places have uh, uh, different chemicals and uh, different minerals in the water. For instance, I live in the city here, and we have chlorine and chlor or chloramines, one or the other, used to, uh, you know, to sanitize the water, and uh, that, there is none of that in distilled in distilled water. Also, if you live in a uh, somewhere where there's a well, you might have iron in your water or whatever, and you may not want that flavor into your meat. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use about a half a gallon of this. And then I'm going to put the rest into the freezer. I don't want to freeze it, I just want to chill it. Because here in a minute we're going to heat up the water that we've got in our pan here in order to dissolve our different things in, into it. And then we will use the chilled water to cool it back down again. Now the next thing I have here is 8 ounces of kosher salt. It, I don't suppose it has to be kosher salt, uh, but eight ounces, eight ounces of salt. Again, kosher salt does not have any chemicals like your uh, table salt does, iodine and such. I've got two ounces. That that was eight ounces by weight, and you know, I've got a little scale here. 
got this thing at a uh, Harbor Freight, and so you know it's cheap, but it works. It's a digital scale. It may not be weights and measure accurate, but it's accurate enough for this. So I've got two ounces. That was eight ounces of kosher salt by weight. This is two ounces of brown sugar by weight. Now, and what we got here, this is our curing salt. It's known as curing salt number one, frog powder number one, paint curing salt number one. It goes by uh, Instacure. It goes by a whole lot of different names. And this is one and a half tablespoons of this curing salt. And that is our actual will actually cure our meat for us and give us that nice uh, pink to dark red type of color that we're looking for. It is also um, used as a preservative and, uh, and it, so it is our sodium nitrites. Now here I have, I'm going to take quarter, one quarter cup of maple syrup. And if you happen to watch my video of uh, me smoking maple syrup, this is smoked maple syrup. I can't tell you how much the uh, smoke has come through now that it has set for a little while. So there's that. We have to work up. Not quite. Just a touch more. There we go. Now then, one of my uh, ingredients that I've really become enchanted with recently is uh, this no sugar added cranberry juice. And um, I have no aversion to using uh, red wine or wine in my cooking, but if you do, you might want to explore using this no sugar added cranberry juice as a substitute for your red wine. And uh, I've found that this cranberry juice really loves meat as, as far as an ingredient for flavoring. Kind of like garlic. So that's all in there now. That's all we're going to use. That's a pretty simple recipe actually. Now we're going to take our pot here over to the stove. And we're just going to heat it up just enough to dissolve all these salts and sugars and get it all into solution. And then we will come back and add our chilled water to it. Okay, so how will I know when all my sugar and salt have dissolved in here? And that's pretty simple because it will become basically clear. And I'll be able to see the bottom of the pan. Until, until that happens, then I, as long as I'm seeing it cloudy, then I know that I've still got um, un, undissolved sugar and salt in my pan here. Oh, by the way, if you want to see the uh, video on me smoking maple syrup, look up in the right hand corner and you'll see a card up there, a link. Okay, so something unexpected has happened here. <laughs> Uh, I have to admit that I'm experimenting um, with the smoked um, maple syrup and the um, cranberry juice and uh, I don't know where this foam has come from uh, but it sure is there. But it's my belief that we are dissolved because when I kind of scoot things away and get a clear spot, how far I can see my spoon down in there. And so it's my belief that we have everything dissolved. Now this is not the first, uh, my first attempt at brining anything. I have uh, done a, two hams. In fact, I have a video you can check out. The making of a Christmas ham part two is where I do the brining of a ham. And I also recently did um, how to make uh, corned beef and pastrami at home. 
and uh, I did uh, I'm, you brine that as well or I should say you cure it as well I think it's time to get our meat ready and everything and uh, so let's get turned around Okay, so I've kind of tried to locate how this uh, bone runs in here, and I think, it, <laughs> I think the big end is right here. It's kind of a blade bone. In fact, if you've ever eaten um, country style ribs, they're actually made out of the pork bone. So, what we want to do is just kind of get this blade bone out of here. This is a boning knife I'm using. I'm running it right along this bone. It's kind of taking a, I don't know if you can see this, it's kind of taking a curve up right here. And when you're smoking a pork butt and you get it good and tender, this bone just like slides right out of it. There we go. We didn't lose too much meat. Now, you can save this bone right here. Put the meat on it. Use it for some stock. Save some bones from here. Ribs or whatever. Boil them all together. Or you can trim it off and make sausage out of that meat. Any of it you can get off of there. But we're done with that. The bone is out. So now then, what do I want to do here? I am going to take, there's a line of fat. I don't know if you can see this, it's right through here. And it kind of goes along with this cut here. So basically, So that will be our next piece of bacon. I don't know how to approach this. I think these pieces have to come off. They will be brined and they can be used for flavoring or something. It's a little thin right there, but I think we can make do. So basically we've got, we're going to have three slabs of our bacon here. So I'm going to go grab my buckets, bucket, we're going to put our 
three pieces of will be bacon in here. So plus our extra pieces. And now we are going to get rid of this. This is not useless. Put it in a freezer bag and freeze it. Save some bones and make some stock. Okay, so when I tell you that I had this all out in a snowbank cooling down, I really had it out in a snowbank cooling down. So everything is nice and cool now. We're not going to cook our meat by pouring this brine in here. Now, before we go too far, we need to make sure we've got brine all the way down into the bottom, underneath all of this meat, in between all of this meat. You think it's going to flow, you can weight it down. And it is trying to flow, but it has to stay submerged. I found when I was doing the brisket for the pastrami and corned beef that once 24 hours was over, it would stay submerged. I guess it kind of became waterlogged or whatever. And I can tell you right now, this cure is plenty cold because my hands are feeling it. My hand, I should say, one hand. I'm basically what I'm trying to do is to mix the fresh water and the brine together. with all the exposed meat parts. Okay, so now we're going to put our lid on. I don't need these gloves anymore. Now we're going to put our lid on. And this is going to find a home in the refrigerator for the next week. So next Saturday, what's today? Today is, today is Saturday the 15th, it's the middle of January. So seven days from the 15th should be the 22nd, I think, if I did my math correctly. And that is the next time we will see this, or I will see it. And you'll see it a couple days later when I publish the video. Okay folks, so yes, no, there is no, uh, taste testing tonight because there's nothing to taste test. Um, so this is going to be in, like I said, in the refrigerator for the next week and we'll just kind of keep an eye on it. I may turn the meat once or twice during the week. Um, although in the tub it should be, it should stay um, in contact with the, 
with the uh, brine. Uh, some people I see when they're doing bacon, they do it in a plastic bag and they flip it over uh, every day uh, in order to make sure that the meat stays in contact with the brine. Well, in this tub, it should not have any problem uh, maintaining contact with the brine, and no need. There should not be any need to turn it, and I think it'll be just fine if I don't. Uh, so, at any rate, come back a week, a week from, uh, well, I will probably release this video uh, Monday the uh, 17th, so it'll probably be seven days later, which should be the 24th, I think, is when we'll see the uh, end results of this, and, or at least the brining part of it, and we may end up going ahead and smoking it from there. So. Do me a favor, if you like what you're seeing down here in the bottom right, right in the bottom right hand corner, <laughs> hit like and subscribe. And hit that little bell down there so you know when a new video comes out. And stay tuned, there's always more to come. And thanks for watching.